Hi everybody, I am Thomas from Virginia Outdoors Unlimited and in today's video we are going to be discussing the Atlantic Flyway Mallard Limit Reduction. So for those of you that don't know, the Atlantic Flyway is moving to a two mallard, only one of which can be a hen limit for the 2019-2020 season and this change is going to be taking place across all Atlantic Flyway states. In this video, what we're going to be focusing on is the reasoning of these changes, specifically the scientific reasoning behind the changes, and then at the very end I'm going to briefly cover my opinion on this topic. Uh, the reason I wanted to make this video and bring this information to light was because I've seen a lot of speculation and misinformation on the internet since uh, the changes have been announced, and I wanted to present the facts of the, of the situation. Uh, I am not a waterfowl biologist. I'm just a college student who enjoys waterfowl hunting and thus I'm very interested in this specific topic. Uh, but I, all the information I'm going to be presenting in this video was gained from online articles. Uh, there's many great online articles about why these changes are taking place, how they're going to affect this and that. Uh, and I'll be citing multiple of these articles in this video. To jump right into the science behind these changes, the first thing that we're going to cover is some of the statistical information that is available to the public that is very, very relevant to why these changes are taking place and really is the, is the driving force behind why these changes are taking place. And as we cover these statistics and the scientific reasoning, I'll be showing graphs and other figures on the screen to give you all a good visual representation of just exactly what is taking place here in the Atlantic Flyway. So the first and probably most important piece of information that I'm gonna be sharing is the fact that the Atlantic Flyway breeding population of mallards has dropped 20% since 1998. So over a 20 year period, we've seen a 20% drop in the breeding population of mallards here in the Atlantic Flyway. And this number is according to two annual fish and wildlife surveys that take place uh, in the Atlantic Flyway, one of which is conducted in Eastern Canada and the other is conducted in the Northeastern United States. And both of these are conducted in the early spring and what they do is they count the breeding population of mallards in the respective areas that the surveys take place. The breeding population of mallards in eastern Canada has remained relatively stable over this 20 year period. Uh, it's been right around 400,000 since the survey was started. However, the breeding population of mallards in the northeastern United States has seen a constant decline since 1998. Uh, the population has been declining at about a 1% rate every year, and I'll put up a graph on the screen showing uh, exactly how steep this decline has been. And that's the first piece of information that you need to understand, and probably the most important, uh, is that the Atlantic Flyway breeding population of mallards has been declining consistently and rather significantly over a 20 year period that we've been monitoring it. And the second piece of information uh, kind of goes hand in hand with the breeding population dropping, and that is that during the same time period, so from 1998 to 2018, the Atlantic Flyway Mallard harvests have declined about 45%. So in 2000, the Atlantic Flyway harvest of mallards, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Hunter Survey, was 523,000. The reported harvest number from that same survey in 2017 was 286,400. So like I said, about a 45% decline in the harvest of mallards from 2000 to 2017. Uh, and this goes, like I said, hand in hand with the breeding population of mallards. You would expect if there's less mallards in the flyway, hunters are going to harvest less mallards. And that is what we have seen. And our banding data tells us that most of the mallards that we shoot in the Atlantic flyway are raised in the Atlantic flyway. So 85% of all mallards shot in the Atlantic Flyway are reported to have either come from the northeastern United States or eastern Canada, that survey area where we're seeing a dropping number of mallards. And that's what our banding data tells us. And this trend increases as you go up the Atlantic Flyway. So for instance, 75% of all mallards shot in New York are raised in the state of New York. So if the New York population of mallards has been dropping about 25-30% over the last 20 years, that is a big problem for New York hunters because they're going to be seeing significantly less mallards. And the reason that this 85% statistic is a big deal is because the interior population of mallards here in the United States is doing very well. Uh, it's been right around 12 million for the past couple of years, just about the best it's ever done. It's well above the long-term average. But through this banding data, we know not many of those interior mallards migrate over here to the Atlantic Flyway. They tend to stay in that central and Mississippi Flyway. So the numbers we need to focus on when we're determining how many mallards we can sustainably shoot, 
The number we need to focus on is that breeding population of mallards in eastern Canada and the northeastern United States. And this is all made worse by the fact that biologists don't have a definitive answer on what is causing the decline of mallards in the survey area, so the eastern Canada and specifically the northeastern United States. Uh, a long-term decline of this nature means that either survival or production is too low to maintain the population size. And just to give people a quick refresher on what survival and production are, uh, survival is how many birds survived from last year's population to breed again, and production is how many young of the year birds make it through the winter and spring. However, uh, according to our banding data, which tells us the survival rates of birds, uh, survival has not declined significantly in the past 20 years in the Atlantic Flyway. And according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Park Survey, also known as the Wing Survey, production has not decreased in the Atlantic Flyway in the past 20 years either. And this indicates that either one or both of these data streams is incorrect. Either the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Park Survey or the banding data is giving us incorrect data because either production or survival have to be decreasing if we're seeing the population decline. And this is one of the biggest problems when it comes to this decline is that we just don't know what is causing it. If we could pinpoint the production being the problem or the survival being the problem, then corrective measures could be instituted and we'd have a better idea of exactly how to help the Atlantic flyway population of mallards come back to full strength. But there's just nothing, there's no information right now that's highlighting exactly what's causing these declines. There's multiple theories out there. I'll uh, throw a quick graphic up of all the theories that have been thrown out, but we don't know exactly what is causing the decline. So as a result, the best course of action was seen as being a reduction of the limit since it doesn't seem that the population can withstand the current harvest rate. And the way they settled on the two bird limit was through predictions, i.e. modeling, uh, which, would, which were used to try and figure out how many mallards would be harvested with certain frameworks. So, for instance, you have this model and you take a three mallard 60 day season and you put in the model and it generates you a number of exactly how many birds we'd expect to be shot uh, with that framework. And so I'm sure they ran a bunch of different iterations of that and they eventually settled on the two bird limit since it was seen that that will reduce the Atlantic flyway harvest of mallards by about 25% and the model predicted that thus the harvest would be sustainable and the population would at least level off and stop declining. So if you all have any questions on any of those points that I made, any further information that I haven't mentioned, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, now we're going to briefly hop into my opinion on this topic. Uh, we're going to keep it brief. Uh, I think this was something that needed to be done. Um, according to all the available information, there has been a, there is a decline happening and it's been a steady and rather drastic decline. And as hunters, I believe we also need to be conservationists. And when an issue like this arises, I think we need to take the approach to preserve the resource. Uh, having a research, having the resource around for future generations is vital and sometimes reducing limits and changing seasons and things of this nature, that's a cost of preserving that resource, resource for future generations. Uh, I know a lot of people, they love shooting big mallard limits, they love going out and harvesting mallards, but we have to also think about being sustainable and having these birds around 25, 30, 40 years down the line for our kids and our grandkids to harvest. Um, and, be able to, and be able to enjoy the same sport we do. However, I wish the changes had been implemented probably five to 10 years sooner. As y'all saw from those graphs, uh, this, hasn't been a, this hasn't just popped up on us. Uh, this decline has been seen over the past 20 years in the survey, and it's been rather constant, about 1% per year. I would have much rather have the mallard limit be dropped to three mallards five years back and then if further changes were needed now, then so be it. But it just seems that the changes were a little bit drastic, and I understand why they need to be drastic given the science that we're, given the statistics that we're seeing, uh, but I just wish we had been a little bit more proactive, tried to get ahead of it uh, and stem it before it became such, this, such a big issue as it is now. That's my thoughts on the topic. Uh, it's not really gonna change how I hunt. Uh, I, you know, we do shoot predominantly mallards, uh, of the 88 puddle ducks we shot last season, 44 of those were mallards, so exactly half. Uh, but, you know, I still love the spots I hunt. I'm still going to hunt largely the same spots. Maybe I'll target mall or, or black ducks or wood ducks if I get the chance more. Uh, but it's not going to really hurt me. 
if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, make sure to leave a comment below. I really want to turn this into a discussion. Uh, if you guys, you know, I want to know about, you know, how it's going to affect you, how it's going to affect your hunting style here in the Atlantic Flyway, because it is a big change. Um, it's relatively, I'd say, unprecedented, at least in my lifetime. I've never seen such a drastic uh, limit reduction. So I think it'll be interesting, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.